In this video, I will try to explain to you how to easily read an MRI scan and to identify the main and important anatomical structures in the MRI scan. This is Mohamed Draz, and this is your knowledge platform about the brain, spine, and beyond. So let's have a look into this normal MRI scan of the cervical spine. So when you look into the MRI scan, um, the first thing that you want to do is to look at the appropriate uh, sequence so that you can identify the anatomical structures. The best sequence to identify the anatomical structures is usually the T2 weighted image. How do you know that this is a T2 weighted image? The best way and the easiest way is that you see the CSF um, signal. So if the CSF signal is turning back to you as hyper intense signal, so it's white struck, it's white in color, so that means it's a T2 weighted image. So here we can see that the CSF here is coming back as white or hyper intense, so that's a T2 image. Second is what um, uh, planes that you need to look at. There are two main planes when you look at the cervical MRI scans that you need to um, uh, look at. The axial image and the sagittal image. Personally, I would always start with the sagittal image, have a look, identify if there is a cross abnormality, and then I look into the axial image where I identify the relevant axial uh, slice which correlates to this uh, sagittal plane. So here what we see is a sagittal image. This is a midline sagittal image. And what we can see here, the top is the brain stem and the cerebellum. So the cerebellum is here, and this is the brain stem. This is the end of the brain stem around the foramen magnum. What we see here is the clivus. And this is the margin of the foramen magnum posteriorly. And this is the kind of the craniocervical junction. Then what we look at here is the what looks like a bullet is basically the C2 odontoid and then the C2 body. And then we have like a little uh, part of bone here and little part of bone posteriorly. And those basically represent the anterior arch and the posterior arch of C1 with the C2 odontoid fitting inside. And then we have the spinal cord, which is the gray structure. So the spinal cord is extending all the way down through the spinal canal, as you can see. If you can identify the C2, which is the easiest to identify, then you can identify the rest of the vertebra. So you can count from top down. So that would be C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. In between the vertebra, you will find the intervertebral uh, discs. So that's C2, 3, disc. 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, and so on. The white signal here is basically the uh, CSF, as I mentioned earlier, which goes around the spinal cord. Posteriorly here, you can see the spinous process. So that's a spinous process of C2, again, C3, C4, C5, and so on. At the top here, what we can see is the uh, a space between the C1 anterior arch and the odontoid, which is the C1, the atlantodental interval. So what we can see here is the spinous processes posteriorly, that's the spinous process of C2, C3, and C4, and so on. And the space in between is the interspinous space, which will include the interspinous ligament. If we move laterally as we go, uh, to each side, then you want here what you will see is the facet joint. So that's the the uh, inferior articular process articulating with the superior articular process of the level below, and that will basically create the foramen on each uh, on that side. So you will see at each level there is uh, like a rounded space which is the foramen. The rounded space will include the nerve root and the CSF that goes around it. To identify those anatomical landmarks of the cervical spine, you can watch the previous video where we had a very nice 3D anatomical models about the main anatomical landmarks of the cervical spine. So as we move laterally, as I said, you will identify the nerve roots within the nerve, uh, within the foramen. Again, move to the other side where you can identify the similar structures as the, uh, the foramen. 
Also, what's important in this MRI scan, not just to uh, focus on the spine, but also rely on the prevertebral space just to identify if there, if there is any prevertebral swelling that can point out to any trauma if the patient has a history of trauma. If we go more posteriorly, what we see here, the, 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 the white thing is basically the fat in the subcutaneous fats in this patient. So in this MRI scan, the sagittal image, I can't see any abnormality. There is no disc prolapse that is causing pressure on the uh, cervical spine. You can see that the line of the, uh, of the flow of the CSF looks smooth and going all the way down fine. There is no abnormal signal within the spinal cord itself. There is no abnormal signal within the rest of the structure. So that looks like a normal sagittal MRI scan. Then looking at the sagittal, uh, the axial image of the cervical spine. So what we need to have a look at is basically that's anteriorly, that's posteriorly, that's the spinous process, that's the lamina. And here are all the paraspinal muscles of the neck. In the middle here is the spinal cord and this is the CSF that runs around it. On each side, you will find like a white structure or white signal coming all the way uh, bilaterally. And that's basically the, the, the foramen uh, on both sides, which will include the nerve roots. And if you uh, move here, we can see that there is a bit of articular process here. And there is a signal here, which looks like a, a flow void. And that's basically the vertebral artery bilaterally. So that's vertebral artery, vertebral artery. And if we move here, that's again the uh, vertebral, uh, the, the foramen on each side. Then what you need to do is basically correlate between each um, axial uh, section with the sagittal image, identify any cross abnormalities on the sagittal view and try to see what's going on in the, um, uh, in the axial view. You need to look for disc prolapses, you need to look for uh, canal stenosis, you need to look for any abnormality within the cord itself, any um, uh, abnormal signal that can identify a tumor or an inflammatory response or any, any trauma within the cervical spine. I hope this simplifies the MRI cervical spine as much as possible, identifying the normal anatomical landmarks. If you keep this image in mind, Try to have a look into multiple normal MRI scans of the cervical spine. And in one of the next videos, what I will try to do is to cover the most common abnormalities within the spine, cervical spine, especially the degenerative cervical spine, so that you can identify the abnormal uh, findings on this MRI scan of the cervical spine. Stay tuned for the next video.